to a Spotlight Artist Series. I've been doing uh, interviewing artists and really digging it. I'm an enabler. What can I tell you? This is Adam Walensky, and uh, I've always loved what he's done. I wanted him to explain his art. He is an ensemblage artist with uh, deep meaning, a lot of textures and symbolisms and underlining stuff, stuff. This one is pretty intense just because it has the meaning of so many things, but she looks like a very peaceful person. They're all intense. They're all intense. Adam Adam's very intense. He's not here right now. He will be in a moment, and he will be explaining his art as we uh, look at the details, and um, he's going to go through his art and see what he's all about. So here's what we're going to uh, kind of do. So here you go. Let's kind of look at it, and we'll go from there. This piece has a little bit going on. What's this all about? This is an assemblage piece I did from materials that I'm gonna confess I took from a rotary club in Kansas City a million years ago. I feel kind of bad about that. And then I superimposed some text on it. I was working for the government at the time. And uh, I was also fascinated by Greek uh, Neoplatonic writings, philosophical writings. So, uh, not a whole lot of deeper meaning in this beyond kind of a fascination on my part. Uh, Greek philosophy, as I mentioned, Neoplatonic philosophy, and then Mithras, fire god, was coincidentally born on December 25th. It's the intersection of aliens, meth, government, and Neoplatonism. There you have it. Now, I know you've gotten a lot of your images and stuff from your world travels. So those are elements I purchased when I was in Egypt many years ago. That's an Islamic phrase at the top, that medallion. And in the collage, I created uh, traveling through several different countries. Radiant Lucifer's is a matchbook that I purchased uh, in Holland. The collage itself is really about fire. It was fun to kind of mix in a lot of Islamist sayings and then Christianity. A lot of that wood was taken from a film studio. We had a lot of stuff going on. Well, you always do, man. You always have a lot of stuff. It's not like you're uh, timid in your images. So what's up with this genie? This piece is really, well, I guess you can guess that it's about traveling into different dimensions uh, with Aladdin as your guide. So Egg is my, my Aladdin. Psilocybin for many years was sort of a drug of choice. I uh, experimented with it widely when I was in my college years, like many of us did. I don't know that I ever went to different planets, but it certainly helped me um, take a flight of fancy, if you will. And then of course, you know, you got the different images from famous sci-fi films. I had a major sci-fi kick for many, many, many years, collected books and magazines and video files and, and all that. I got these, uh, scored these mushrooms at a uh, garage sale back in LA and it all came together. So yeah, not of this earth, kind of the story of my life. I like to think of myself as a Buck Rogers type character. Wow, Satan's satellite, that's an oldie, but a goodie. This is quite obviously 2000 and from the aughts, from 9-11. Uh, that used to be a Simpsons airplane. Uh, pictures of the different hijackers. At the time I was working for Fox Mobile, we were getting a ton of those Nokia phones. They were gonna get discarded, so I decided to repurpose them. G.W. Bush, you know, he was sticking his middle finger out in that one video, and I thought that was really entertaining as hell. So I kind of made it a motif for sort of the way we, we all behave. That postcard dates from the 1970s. It was given to me by a pen pal. I used to go to Miami. Well, there's our protagonist, sort of, living peacefully, not knowing what's about to uh, take place. And then I dropped in the 9-11 Commission report, fun, light reading. And there's a little miniature trash can there on the right. I felt at the time 
that a lot of our customs were sort of discarded. What drives your art, Adam? Uh, here we go. This is the Moche people, the M-O-C-H-E. is a uh, Peruvian culture that thrived, I think, about the 10th century. They were uh, very fierce. Um, they, were, they practiced cannibalism and a variety of other things. The Spanish came in. The Moche had pretty much disappeared at that point, but they thought there was going to be gold, so they rerouted a river and uh, destroyed a lot of the... Uh, the Moche culture, the main city. That's an image of it right there. That was their main deity. I'm gonna confess I don't recall the name, but that dude is very, very fierce looking. And there is Cortez. Proyecto Chan Chan. That was the uh, excavation there. Really beautiful, desolate place. Can't recommend it enough if you happen to be traveling through Peru. It's just stunningly beautiful. Pan American Highway intersects it. As you can see that image right there, uh, those are the Moche reliefs, which have really survived throughout the years. This was uh, meant to be kind of a sparse piece. I tend to overpopulate things, but I wanted to keep this one very much focused on the centerpiece. The red background represent the human sacrifice, and of course, you know, the toll that the Spaniards enacted on, uh, on these uh, cultures that they decimated. Once again, a lot going on. What's this piece about? It's my tribute to, to Robert Oppenheimer. Uh, I was very fascinated by Oppenheimer for many, many years. Uh, those are images of the hydrogen bomb. Of course, you know, everybody said, we're gonna you know, bomb you back to the Stone Age. If you look closely, there's an image of Salvador Dali sort of superimposed in the background by the mushroom cloud. I've had a fascination with atomic bombs for, for many years, probably because I heard so much about them as a kid. My dad was very much a pacifist after World War II. Cover your life in the atom world. Yeah, uh, I, I can't imagine it'd be a very happy one. And of course you got, you know, the guy sort of reclining there at the top, doing his own thing, relaxing. And there he is. Dissolution will come quickly, right? There's your VCR. That's all stuff from the Simpsons. Those are all little Simpsons toys that I repurposed. My years at Fox, I had access to a lot of Simpsons swag, which I used productively, as you can see. And then, of course, the requisite images of Soviet satellites and the nascent U.S. space program. Back when Sputnik launched, of course, it scared the bejesus out of everybody because the idea was that the uh, Russians would be able to launch atomic bombs from space. There you have it. Another one of my light and cheerful compositions. So it's 0.66 milliseconds. You can see the detonation spreading. Those are, there's Dolly's uh, mus mustache. Kind of hard to discern over the years, but it's right there. And there is our protagonist, Robert Oppenheimer, who was a brilliant scientist, became fervently anti-war, anti-nuke, and really was made to suffer for it. Brilliant man, uh, very misunderstood man. What's this piece about? Explain. This is, those are materials that I purchased in Bolivia. There's some water there from the Ganga. That little urn contains water from uh, the Ganges. It's something of a reliquary piece. That mirror is from India as well. That little head right there is Peruvian. It's kind of worse for wear, but who isn't in this day and age, right? And then uh, I got some of the materials above the head from the witch's market in, in Bolivia. Christianity, Christian themes, religious themes run through much of my work. I've always had a fascination with religiosity, Trinity, and so forth. Not a practice, sir, of any one religion, but I do find it all very fascinating. I think a lot of people do as well. So purple, purple is important to me. Purple and gold really meant to represent you know, uh, royal colors in you know, the Roman Empire. Quite provocative. Her name is Sarita, S-A-R-I-T-A. She's a patron saint of thieves and pimps and robbers. She was a schoolgirl. It was very sadly was murdered on her way home from school. Subsequently became venerated by a variety of, of people in the swastikas. I purchased through travels in India and then I dropped them in Photoshop and manipulated the colors and so forth. 
The phrase above her head is Dios lo ve todo, God sees everything. I superimposed the uh, Hindi eye, third eye. Uh, I got those in India too, went to a, a street vendor. I purchased every one of the little eyes that he had, so I got them all. He had a very good day, that gentleman. This piece for me is a tinge with sadness, but uh, as Egg mentioned, she is seems very much at peace, at rest. I've always kind of loved that, that image of her. And that stencil I got from the Fox sign shop many, many, many years ago, and they were being thrown out. A big recycler, as anybody who knows me uh, can attest. I pick up wood from wherever I can find it. I like working with found materials. This is a piece that I kind of struggled making because uh, of its context. And there is your uh, India travel piece. A lot of those uh, icons I picked up again in Southern India, Mumbai as well. Uh, Egg added that little thing right here, whatever that thing is, but I like it. There's uh, Satya Sai Baba. Is that Satya Sai Baba? It's one of the Babas. I have a hard time keeping track of them all. I can't recall if I mentioned this or not, but the wood is from the discarded TV and movie sets. When I was at Fox, they would toss them into the dumpster, and I would go dumpster diving for the wood, and then I would make my assemblages. Good times. It's all about recycling. Recycled themes, recycled gods, recycled spirituality. Thank you for the showcase, Egg. I'm greatly honored. There we go. All right. Okay. What motivates you, Adam? What motivates you? What's the essence of your art? No messing around, what does motivate you? What motivates you in your art? What makes, what makes you tick? What inspires you? Where do you get your ideas? Where do you get these ideas from? Do they just kind of happen? Thank you very much. I really uh, appreciate your time, help, and going through all the, um, your, uh, your art and, you know, filleting your, yourself for your art. Thank you very much. I totally dig your shit. Totally love it. Check you later. All right. Now. You just fill in there and kind of go about it, and I'm going to edit this up, and then you kind of do what you're going to do. We're going to go to the car, and we're going to have a couple of people.